Hi guys and welcome back to our YouTube channel. In today's video, it's going to be different from my usual videos. I will be doing a speed painting video actually of me making my emotes. A lot of people were interested in seeing the behind the scenes and my friend Molly suggested that I make a speed painting video of me drawing. So here it is, a speed painting video of these cows. <music> Okay, so not gonna lie, I'm not quite sure how I want to structure this video because, okay, so TLDR, I actually used to have a speed painting YouTube channel that no one would watch. I'd average like five views on it and like they're probably all my dad, but I mean, honestly, it's fine. My art back then sucked anyways. That was back when I was in high school. But I personally also really like watching speed painting videos. I just like keeping them open on the side. And just liking to like get the chill vibes, you know, so feel free to go mute me if you don't want to hear the ramblings and just watch me speed paint this. I would still appreciate it a lot. Don't worry, I won't be offended. Um, but if you would like to go and listen to my narration, I'm just going to kind of like walk through my thought process slash like what I'm thinking, how I draw my emotes, how I decide to draw my emotes. So, I mean, if you notice, I have a template that I am drawing on. It's really not that complicated. I just drew a bunch of squares. And also this drawing program that I'm using is Clip Studio Paint EX. And I am using a Huon 610 Pro drawing tablet and an external battery pen. I don't know. I just looked up like the Huon battery pen. I bought the $13 one off Amazon. Although from what somebody has told me, apparently they have like a newer version now. So I haven't tried that. I don't know how it would go. Not sponsored for any of these. I purchased them all myself. This is just what I've used and what I've been using to draw my emotes for the past like year, two years. But yeah, back to the template. It's literally just six squares. It's not that hard. Uh, I actually put it on a white background. I should have just put the squares on a transparent background instead to make my life easier. But I don't draw in a way that most emote artists draw in. Most emote artists draw all of their emotes on one file. Like you see how I'm sketching and all of the sketches are on one file so you can compare. I don't like drawing my emotes that way. I don't know, it's just me personally. I like doing them on individual files. So you'll see when I get to actually coloring them, I cut out every single sketch and I'll paste them on an individual file layer. It's just how I like work, like making my emotes. I've tried doing it the other way. I just don't like it. This is just the way I do it. But um, I like sketching them out in this format so I can see how the sketches compare to other cows. Also, I tried drawing like a little sitting cow, but I ended up not liking the way it looked. The cow just looked, I don't know, it kind of looked like a rag doll and the legs look kind of funny. So I got rid of it. But uh, if you guys like it, maybe I'll bring back sitting cow. But yeah, so I'm just sketching the emotes next to the other emotes that I have so I can kind of get the orientation down. I don't like making all the emotes the same level of zoomed in and facing the same direction. So if you notice, like the direction the emotes are facing are varied and so is the zoom. Still, you want to make sure it's like kind of close up so you can tell the details of the emo itself because when you zoom out details can get lost and here i'm just copy and pasting the sketches onto the individual files this is what i was referring to when i'm saying i like working at individual files i don't know something for me personally i have an illustration background i've illustrated like my whole life that's what i do i it just hurts me to do them on one file for some reason so basically i'll just paste the sketch down and i will start drawing over the sketch uh i just lower the opacity of the sketch and do my line art on the layer above uh, in clip studio paint i use the g pen you can see in the top left uh it's called the g pen it's just a regular pen brush in any other drawing program i use a size 40 weight brush and my canvas size is 2000 by 2000. i also have an emote drawing tutorial up already and i have a tutorial on how to draw sub badges filmed and i am in the process of editing it currently i'll remake my emote drawing tutorial like an actual physical walkthrough where i'm like showing you how i draw everyone not sp speed painting so it'll actually be slowed down and then if you notice here now i'm doing the finer line art for the finer details so i'm using a 25 weight brush it's still the g pen same color as well it's just a thinner pen so that the details um, won't be as notable. I like wearing, uh, I can't speak, I like varying the line art weight. So I use a heavier line art for the important details that you want to be visible when you zoom out. So important details, noting the silhouette of the cow, for instance, um, that when the cow's hands are in a prayer position. So I want that prayer to be visible. Um, this one, the cow's lying down, not important. The strawberry would be uh, outlined as well. And so would be the heart. 
And then when I'm drawing details that I really want to be visible, I'm talking about the eyes. I use an 80 weight brush. I just kind of vary it here and there. I just like, and it's an 80 weight pen and I just draw it over and over. So you notice the eyes are kind of like double layered. It's because I drew it over twice. Um, and then the mouth, it's a random size. I think I used like a 60 weight brush this time. And then for the hype emotes, like the, the confetti, I mean, I use a 25 weight for that. But it's because I like using a very heavy black outline around my emotes and my sub badges. It's just my personal style. So, but I found that if I used a really thick liner for the confetti and then a really thick black outline on top of that, it looks really wonky. So here I'm just coloring everything in. Yes, I know I can use the uh, lighthouse feature to go and fill. I know it would be faster, quote unquote. One, I actually really just like coloring it in. I just feel like it's really therapeutic for me. I really enjoy doing this process of uh, creating art. But secondly, it's because I can't actually use the line art feature because my line art are on separate layers. I don't know if you can tell. It's for what I do later by adding the heavy black outline. Um, but like some of the arms would be on a layer on top of the body. So the line art is not completely connected. It's because of adding the black outline later, it works for me, but it drives people insane when I don't use the fill feature, like the lighthouse reference fill feature that Clip Studio Paint offers. It's the reference feature in Procreate, but it's just the way that I like to work. Okay, leave me alone. It works for me, okay? But yeah, if you also noticed earlier, I was coloring the cows in with like a darker color and then I colored them in. I just filled bucket with the cream color afterwards. It's simply because, um, if I color it in with the cream color initially, because the background's white, you, it's a little bit harder to tell. And I know I can just go and fill the background in with a darker color, but quite frankly, I am too lazy to do that. So here I'm just filling in the rest of the details by coloring in the ears and coloring in the noses. I think they're looking so cute. Um, and then I have the reference colors on top of this one that I was using. So the one color was for the splotches and one color was for the ears, the nose, and the boobs. Is that how you pronounce it? I think I'm getting it right. And then this is the one time I think I used the lighthouse feature and I believe this is like the very last bit of flat color I had to add. I work in so many layers, oh my gosh. Okay, and then here now I'm finally adding my rendering. So what I first like to do is I like grabbing an airbrush and just airbrushing on top of the body. I only do it on the body. I don't really, well, it depends on what I'm drawing. If it's like a very rounded thing, I'll airbrush onto it, like a heart or something like that. And then I pick a very warm red brownish color for the shadows. You can see me blocking it in right here. And then I go back afterwards and convert all of the layers to a multiply layer. I think I made it like multiply 50%, something like that. Um, and I curve all the, the shading. So if you notice, most of the shadows are very like curved. It's because the cow is obviously rounded. It's not very blocky, not very geometric. So um, because of that, you got to make all the shadows curved. And then here I unclipped the brown layer and I'm just adding some airbrushing shadows to the bottoms of the ears. I don't even know what that's called. I just personally like the way that looks. Again, my, my working process bothers a lot of people, but it's just what works for me. It drives a lot of people insane to look at this. Uh, here I'm adding just some small highlights. I always use my light source coming from the left hand side. I don't know, personally, that's just what I like to do. So here I am adding my highlights. Again, using the G pen, the only two brushes I, the three brushes I use, sorry. I use a G pen for everything, pretty much. The airbrush, you can definitely tell when I'm airbrushing. And when I add a flat color, I use the marker pen or the marker brush. That Those are the only three I use. And here I'm adding ambient lighting coming from the other side using the same color as the highlight. And then now I'm just shading the heart. I really like adding ambient lighting. I just think it really softens and rounds out your art, especially because it's an emote. So, you know, it's very small and it just gives it more depth. All right, and here we're adding the last little bits of highlights, details, and rendering. And then you'll see how I add the black outline. It's a little bit of a tricky process, um, but I just use the magic selection wand and I select in the dead space of a layer of the line art. And then we want to inverse the selection and then expand it by 30 pixels. Uh, I will make a more in-depth tutorial walking you through this down the line because I know uh, I'm a visual learner personally and you know me telling you this is probably not going to be um, you're probably not going to understand it very well because I'm a visual learner, so if you are too, then me telling you probably won't do much. Sorry, I'm kind of rambly. 
But yeah, basically, once I'm done adding the black outlines, I save them all as PNGs and I upload them to an emote resizer to go and resize them to the proper emote dimensions. You can just Google emote resizer online and it's like the first GitHub that comes up here, I'm resizing them. But yeah, let me know if you like this video and you found it helpful. Yeah, and here I am throwing this into Photoshop to go and edit the template for my Etsy shop. And I realized I also named the template wrong. So it says Twitch badges, not Twitch emotes. I went back and changed it later because I didn't realize. But if you like this video, I appreciate it. If you'd like to subscribe, then left a comment so I know that you enjoyed it. But yeah, so here is the final product. I don't know why the pan ended up looking really weird, but it's going to be on my Etsy shop and it will be linked down below. Thank you so much for watching this video.